Hi, my name is Peace. Let me not waste your time. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this 3D text that I do in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. First things first, I got a fusion composition that's lasting a second and eight frames. And I'm just going to go inside of that right there. First thing I'm going to do is add a 3D text. We can get from up here and then we can get a 3D render and then plug that all together. And we're just going to type in our text we're going to do first. I'm going to do uh, the same one I did, see you. And then we're going to actually add a uh, 3xf which is a transform 3d and let's put that on there now i'm going to just going to edit my text the way i want it with my uh my font settings i'm just going to do that right now all right now we have something like this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower with the first this transform i'm going to lower the, the 3d text using the translation on the y and hit ctrl g so we can kind of center this as best as possible I think it's did a pretty good job doing that right now. We turn G off and then we're gonna add another 3D transform. So just space 3XF and add another one right here. You can actually go into the 3D text now and then take a look at it in 3D space. What we're gonna do is go to extrusion in the tab, scroll down and then put extrude the extrusion depth and also put it to uh, custom that we could control a little bit more controls like this and make a curved bevel like this I think that's not too bad and if you can't see the bevel the bevel is like this i'll show it real quick it is the roundedness at the top of the x right here so make this bevel bigger you can see how it gets more rounder at the edge Actually, I think we'll leave it like that right now. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do the animation to the text first before we put the texture because it's going to lag a lot more if we don't. Let's just do our animations. So let's uh, use this 3D transform and center our footage a little bit more with the Z depth. And I think uh, that would be a good distance for the text when we'll see it uh, pop up again. Or right, actually, that, that should be fine. And then we're gonna to go to the three transform that's here, and then we're gonna to need to move this pivot point in the center because this is what we're gonna to use to use our uh, big animation. The first one is just to put it in the right place that we want it to originally start at. So let's go to the three transform. Let's move the pivot. We're just gonna move the Z back until it is somewhere in between here and here. That should be fine. Next we're gonna do is we're gonna do our animation. So. What I have it do is from 0 to 12 frames, it zooms out, and then we're going to zoom back in from 12 to 31. So I'm going to keep in the Z distance at 0, at 12, and then probably 31 again. And so we're going to have it zoom in about this distance. This goes out to normal, and then we're going to zoom in a bit right here, and that should be good. So something like this. Next one we're gonna do is the rotation. Let's hide that pivot so we don't get too confused. Do the rotation. So I'm just gonna keyframe at X and Y at the first frame, all frames, and the 31 frames like this. So we want it to be visible like this here, visible like this here. We want the spitting to happen as well. So we're gonna move the Y and we're gonna do something like this. And so if we undo it goes like that and then we're gonna have it spin again and we're gonna need to spin it again like this we'll have like a negative 360 like that or we can even go a little bit over so we have that and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have this lean over the beginning it was like this in the middle maybe even tilt a little downwards or actually let's go upwards and then 31 we're gonna have it tilt downwards so it's just a tad 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 bit all right now we're gonna open the spline graph and drag this node with all the keyframes into here highlight all these hit s and then go through one by one we want this beginning everything at the beginning the spline to be downwards like this have this spline flat and then we're gonna move this spline up a little bit like that so we have Something like this, and then we just do that for all of these spline graphs. Just bring it down, flatten this, and then pull this back in. This one, pull it down, 
have the B flat, and then we're gonna list down like this. Now we have something like this. And we're gonna, instead of having it B flat, we're gonna angle it so it's always moving. See now how much smoother that is than having uh, any flat line, but that works pretty well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna keyframe for our second word now. So let's have it see you, and then we want the next word to be girl. And we will keyframe at a spot where we usually can't see the text, but let's see if we can change our spline a little bit. We have something like that. Okay, there we go. So now at this frame, I'm gonna keyframe here, and I'm gonna go back one frame, keyframe here, go back to this keyframe, and then we're gonna change the word to a girl. Now we have something like this. It's a nice clean transition. I'm gonna see you to girl. And even if we want, we can bring this back a little bit because I think it's a little bit too close. There we go, something like that, it's nice. And what I also did for this text is I put a uh, bender, so just put a bender in between here, put this axis on X, the angle on 90 hit group objects. So it takes all these letters and then we can change the, the bend or amount like that. So let's have it bend forward to normal. All the way to here just before we have it bend back and then at the very end we're gonna have it bend forward again so because we're doing a zoom out and then open our spline and then ease this up a bit so just smooth it out pretty much and that should be fine for everything and now that we have our animation we can move on to the texture so we're gonna move this to text 3d back and we're gonna add a replace material node add that right here and the material i'm going to use actually is from the reactor plugin uh, kick ass shaders. So, what you're gonna do is download Reactor. I do have a video coming up as soon as this video comes up. If you want to download Reactor, so uh, what I'm gonna use is KAS Chrome, and we're just gonna plug this into our replace material. And you can see that we have a really nice reflection map on this text. But actually, what I'm gonna do ungroup this. I'm actually gonna replace this map that we have here. If we just take this off, see, it's just that texture with my own reflection map that I have, that I got just from Google, you can find, I like the bright ones, so I wanna find something like that, that this works, I really like this one. And uh, now we have our animation with the nice texture. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is do the uh, particles. So I'm just gonna tr copy this transform and this render, copy, paste it, and then we're gonna put a merge here and then usually you would have particle controls you can get from here, but I don't have those. So I'm just gonna do P emitter like that, and then P render. And connect this to our transform 3D. Now you can see that the particles really far off into the corner. We don't want it that want it like that. So what we're gonna need to do change our particles in our particle emitter. So first thing first is we're gonna Keyframe at the beginning, and then second frame. Second frame, we're gonna have zero. First frame, we're gonna have 100 to 150. And that's the best uh, values to do. Next, we'll go to style. We're gonna change the style to n-gon, and then choose the circle over here. And then go to the size controls, and maybe bring it down a tad. And then in order for it to be in our whole space, we're gonna go to region. We're gonna click the region, and we're gonna click uh, the Q and put all these values to four or five. What I find is the best to use, even the depth, we're gonna put the five. And if this is a little weird on the axis, we're gonna move the pivot up back to the normal. And that should be, uh, that should be good. There, that's good enough. And then we're gonna change this, switch the inputs. So the text is first, and so it's not going to be competing with any of the particles for visibility. Might actually lower the size a bit more. And we're going to go to controls, and we're going to go to rotation, and uncheck always face camera, and up the X variance and Y variance, and maybe even move it a bit. 
it's up it a lot. So now we have variance in our particles. I still, I think they're too big, lower it a bit. And now we're gonna go to color controls in our style, color variance. The values we're gonna use, we're gonna bring the green all the way over here and the red all the way over here and then balance this out like this. And there we go. We have the red and blue particles that we, that we have. And the last thing we're gonna do for this section is we're gonna add a background. So grab a merge and then we're gonna add a fast noise from here, connect it up the control T so everything's in the back for the fast noise. Let's go to color for fast noise and put this alpha up. Then we go back to noise. We're just gonna turn a bunch of these values down, contrast, brightness, detail, all the way down, even the scale. And then we're, what we're actually gonna do is up the seed rate to about 0.2, so, or a little more, so we can see the background moving for a little bit of variance, maybe up the contrast or just mess with the settings. I think that's a little bit better. Gonna bring this a little bit more down. For the most part, that is your text. I believe it last one of the last things I did was add a prism blur to this part of the text. Prism, and we're gonna choose all these settings off that are here for process. So it just has the red channel, and then aberration. Uh, sorry, distance up, blur strength up, and then we're gonna put the blend down a lot. And then if we don't like the color of our particles, we could need to spice them up a bit. We can put a color corrector, which is here. We can just put like the saturation up a bit more. I think what I did also is add a soft glow here and then put it down a little bit more, a lot more. And that should be, that should be good. All right, this is our final result. Uh, the last thing I would kind of add, because uh, this is what I did in the edit, is I added a zoom out for about two, three frames. I'm just going to do that now. Grab an adjustment clip. Put it here. Let's go inside it. And we're just going to add a dent node. Like that. And then put the strength the opposite way. And then put the dent to three, I believe. And it should look something like this even animate it to get to this point. That just adds a little bit more to it. Be a little bit too long. Maybe put it just two frames. If any other questions or suggestions on what I should do in the future, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you'd like to join the Resolve Amy Community Discord, there's a link in the description as well as my own server if you'd like to join. And with that, subscribe and have a good day.